Welcome to Markitecture, where you can get smart fast with in-depth interviews of leading technology vendors. I'm Mike Shields, and I'm here with Rich Radden. He's the co-founder and co-CEO of Zephyr. Hey, Rich, thanks for being here. Thanks, Mike. Good to be here. So let's just get into it from the top with the easy one that's a little bit open-ended, but it'll get us started. What does your company do? Yeah, we think we solve a really challenging problem, which is brand safety and suitability, both targeting and measurement in the walled gardens. And specifically, we think it's really challenging in the walled gardens because the amount of content that's being uploaded to these platforms, because they're basically user uploaded platforms, mm -hmm. but the amount of content that's being uploaded on a minute to minute basis is just staggering. And so to be able to understand these environments, understand what's being uploaded and make sure that it's safe and suitable for brands is a really challenging, challenging problem to solve. What is your core product now? Who uses it? So the, the I'll tell you about the product that we're very excited about, and then I'll tell you what our core product is. So I'll go yeah. in reverse okay. order. So what happened is, so we built out this architecture to understand these environments. Yes, we were super excited that Garmin come around, and now we're like, okay, we're a pre-bit targeting solution on YouTube. You can buy with this contextually, which is basically, it was the core product at that time. But now you can layer on all GARM risk levels on that in a pre-bid environment on YouTube. Where it changed for us it ultimately is TikTok started doing some diligence in this space because brand safety started coming up. Conversations, marketers around brand safety started coming up. Mm -hmm. And TikTok did a little diligence and went with our teams. They were just completely blown away by what we'd spent at that point we, you know, this is, this is late 2000, two and a half years into rebuilding the architecture. At that point, we invested about $40 million into it and they were just blown away by it. And they said, we want to invite you to be a third party. And we said, great, we'll do, we'll, we'll be a targeting partner on your platform. They said, no, mm -hmm. no, no, we're not interested in that. We're interested in you for brand safety and suitability measurement post campaign. So that, that's a customer telling you, telling you that you, we need you for something different than you, what you've been doing for a long time. Well, interestingly, yeah, customer, I guess, but a partner. So right, they, right. They, so yeah. we don't charge TikTok. We charge the brands and, and we were like, are you sure about that? Like everybody knows us. Like, yes, you know, we've been talking to YouTube about becoming the brand safety and suitability measurement partner. And, and, and that's kind of in the works, but. Like our core is targeting, but they were just really like, look, they were, they were not wrong in the sense that they said, you guys do this very, very well and you should be measuring from a brand safety and suitability standpoint content. And I don't want to put words in their mouth, but you could tell they just were more into developing their own first party filters. Um, right. and their own first party contextual tools that were native. Right. But measuring was really important in their ecosystem. So we agreed to do it. It's been an awesome, awesome, we're in general availability around the world. It's been really well received. And the thing that's been really fun about it is it's been, so we measure around the GARM framework and it's been very, I think it's been staggering for people that have been in this world a long time because I think people got used to, well, my brand safety and suitability partner on the open web tells me I'm safe. They show me a few screenshots, but I don't really, but I trust mm -hmm. them. They're good people. Yeah. I trust them. We kind of went into it and said, look, we believe not enough innovation has happened in this space. We don't actually want you to trust us. We want to be completely transparent with all the content you're around. And by the way, we'll show you how we rank that content according to the GARM definitions. Okay. And that's where it's cool because it literally empowers the brands and the agencies with all the information. Then they can say, hey, wait, you got this wrong. Or, oh, by the way, that was great. Look, I really appreciate you flagging this for me. You were dead on on this. But it just opens up. It, and, it, and that kind of transparency, I just think creates, it creates the need for innovation. Mm -hmm. Because what it does is it forces tech vendors to not be, not rely on just sales and marketing. To be, get, you know, just right. win their trust. Tell them not to worry about it. But we actually innovate with the product. Thanks for listening. To hear the complete interview, subscribe at architecture.tv.